And we're back. I'm back. You also are back. So we are back. And we continue working on our character, which is good. Now, let's move a little bit the lower lip this way. Okay, move the lower lip here a, a little bit up. I'm just watching the concept and trying to achieve similar result. And the problem is here, of course, that we have only one view of the concept. Uh, with this pose of the mouth, of course, because as, as as I told you, you can always go and do the neutral expression. It will not be the same as with this expression. I think this expression is pretty cool. That's why I want to try to recreate it, which probably will be a little bit difficult, but ah, we will try at least. It's not a big issue. Trying never hurts. Of course, it takes time. But it's it's uh, time well spent because you are practicing. And practicing is the key. So those will be his eyebrows. Of course, probably we'll have to make them separately. But I will just try to push them down here. Because you see, the distance between the inner portion of the eyebrow and the upper eyelid is very, very minuscule, minuscule. So very, very small. My idea is that it has to be small in order for him to look like, like something like this. You know, very small distance there. And from the front view, he doesn't look bad. From the side view, a little bit bad. But when we put the beard, everything will be, I think, okay. Because the silhouette will start to get better. It will start to get it. Here I'm not sure how we have to approach this particular area. But we'll see. I will just do this. And uh, hmm, I'm thinking. I'm watching the concept and actually thinking how to approach this. This line from the upper nose or the upper nostrils down should always go a little bit further away from the corners of the mouth and then between the, this line and the corners of the mouth there is almost always a little bit of a distance which can kind of crumble also as well and this is true unless uh, you smile very hard or something then could be a little bit different but usually it's true Remove the symmetry again and work on this corner of the mouth. I will put this, which is a bulge of muscles, and maybe a little bit of fat, but mostly muscles, which should be there. It will give us a better representation of the forms there, if the, I just do this, and then smooth it a little bit on the top, but not too much on the uh, side of the mouth. I think it's good. Now... Uh, in order to do the, the beard, we have a couple of options. We can do the beard and the head together, or and the hair together, which I think it's a good option. Although, in this case, the hair is not very visible because of the helm. But, we will do it, and since we have this concept here, we will get like a hand of it, and we will do it like this. In the beginning, we will do it symmetrically because uh, after we have to, you know, lose the symmetry and make this kind of an interesting thing. So, how do I do this? How do I approach this? If the beard is very close to the face, I usually mask the face in the areas that the beard will be or the mustaches, and then I extract it. And then it's another mesh, and then I can, you know, manipulate it. But in this case, I probably will use just a sphere. Yeah, I know. It's a little bit, you know, awkward, but I think a sphere will be a good thing to use. So let's try. Control tap left to go to object mode and then shift A and add a sphere. This sphere will be our beard. I will immediately go to scope mode, uh, symmetry, and then just move it down and start with the move brush from the side view, from the front view, from all the views I need to make it like, look like, you see? He's looking already very nice. He's looking like some kind of a mascot of a of certain football team or whatever. But it doesn't matter now. 
we'll continue working with our grab brush. In ZBrush, it's called Move Brush. In Blender, it's called Grab Brush. Same type of brush. It's for moving geometry around, and it's one of the most essential brushes in the world. In the universe, even, we may say. But we will not say it. Now, I will push it here around the ears, because usually you don't have hairs growing out of your outer ears. Out of your inner ears, but you have. I mean, I have. I have hair growing inside my ear, which uh, probably we will not do on this character uh, since it's stylized. But if I do a character who is like 40 and above years old, I probably will put some, you know, ear hair in his ears because it's more realistic than not. Of course, uh, not uh, every, not any two people are equal which means that there will be differences between different people, definitely. And some people probably will not have ear hair that much, but I have a lot. Uh, probably because I don't have too much on my head anymore. <clears throat> but let's continue with this and see how we will translate it into the hair sculpt. So again, I'm only working with the grab brush. Only the grab brush and I am able to do everything with it. It's easy. Now you see, this is where we need more polygons. Not too many polygons. When I do something like hair or face or body or whatever I do, I always start low, start and then a little bit higher, then work then a little bit higher, and then work, and then a little bit higher, and then work. It will be, I think, in my opinion at least, if you know better, it's okay. But in my opinion, it will be very bad if you just, you know, bump up the geometry right away and you will suffer great consequences. So, I'll press R and get it by 0.03. Or 0 0.04, I don't care. Control R. And now we have it. I will smooth it. And continue working. Now, for the hair itself in the back, uh, we probably shouldn't do too much symmetry, but I will do just uh, two of those uh, things that will, you know, those strings of hair that will be going out. And then probably I should just stop working on the hair because. Uh, we will need the hair to not be symmetrical. Symmetrical hair is... Yeah, it's okay sometimes. But in this case, I think it would be better not to have symmetrical hair here. And we have to pay attention of the forms, how the uh, how the beard is meeting the body here. So I will go to my uh, draw sharp brush and start doing some things on the beard in here. Because this beard has to go up above the corners of the mouth a little bit in this area. Then here it will cover most of the things below the jaw, uh, below the cheek. And I will make sure that there the beard is a little bit thinner. And then we will go above around the ear and I will just move it forward. Make sure it's a little bit more interesting because otherwise if it's just the uh, couple of lines it would be boring we don't want that we don't want boring boring is not what we need definitely we need everything to be you know dynamic not everything though uh, you have to be careful with dynamic because if everything is completely dynamic it could become boring I, I know I know it sounds not exactly logical but um, we have to have areas where it's dynamic and areas where it's more subtle. That's this way you will have these variations and it will be more dynamic by itself. With the variations, that's what I mean. And that's that's cool. Now I will move the beard back as it is here because you see how when it goes around the ear and then goes back. And let's try that. We don't have to do it completely like the concept, but since the concept is good, and uh, I think the concept is made by a, by a woman. Uh, so she, let's say, is 
uh, she knows what she's doing, basically. Hopefully, I'm not mistaken, because I forgot. Sorry about that, but uh, I forgot. I mentioned it in the intro, I mentioned it in the goodbye video always, but I uh, kind of don't exactly know it now, but I'm pretty sure it was a woman or a girl that made the concept, and she obviously knows what she is doing, so we probably should trust her with the character, and we should do most of the character by the concept. Yeah. And that's what we are doing, mostly. But, some areas, since we are 3D artists, especially areas that are not covered by the concept, like, for example, the back of the head. Uh, we, we have a little bit of a back of the head, but we cannot make anything from it. Except for the form of the... Um, of, of this, uh, of the cap, skull cap, or helm, helmet. Yeah, this we can do a little bit. We can make it, we can see how it is. Other than that, not too much. But it's okay. We are fine. Now, let's make the beard a little bit wider here with the grab brush. Alright, and those two parts of the beard, I'm not sure we need to make them too further apart. Because later we have to make the asymmetry and then they will come back together. So it's fine. But overall, we need to make sure we have this area here where the beard is kinda split into... It's not split, it's the opposite of split. But I'm not sure how it's called. But it's made into this kind of uh, things. And then it has a little bit of more volume. So what I will do is I add a little bit more geometry now. So I press R. Increase the geometry to 0.01. .01. Yeah, it's interesting. I say increase, but I decrease the number. But when you decrease the number, this means your polygons will be smaller, so there will be more polygons. And I control R, and now I have a good understanding what's happening. Not exactly understanding, but I uh, can now see, and I can uh, do more things. I can be more creative. Now, I'm planning from this video onward, the videos will be at least half an hour each. You know, in the beginning, I say the videos should be smaller in size, but as we approach now, kind of, we have something like a head, which looks not super bad, we can dial them down a little bit. Tiny. Uh, dial them down, but I mean to dial them up in the du duration of the videos to be longer. All right. So this looks almost good. Now I can try to do a little bit of this. Okay. I'm not sure how this will do. But let's just do some X's here. Smooth. Then do again. And at some point maybe we will do mm, some wraps around here. But I'm not exactly sure that we will do it. I mean, we can leave it as it is, just to look like there's a wrap, but there will not be wrap. So, the idea here is that all the things we are doing will be for the 3D print. And if it will look good in the 3D print, we probably should do it. But if it doesn't matter that much for the 3D print, we could leave it be. But if you want to do it properly, or especially if you will do just the head, for example, if you don't do the body and stuff, you probably want to put the much detail, as much detail as possible into the head part. So you will put a lot of detail onto the beard and the hair also. But if we do everything, all the character, then um, it depends. If this character will be used, for example, for a game, uh, if this character will be viewed up close, or he will be like this, this far away, further away and it will be for some kind of a just a shop in which you will see the character it depends and everything you do depends on that how much detail you will put into your model uh, you require to know what this model will be for in our case it will be for 3d printing i'm just putting some detail on the beard um, a little bit of hairs 
going inside but uh, you have to be careful this has to be subtle but also has to look relatively nice the hair shouldn't be absolutely symmetrical to each other not symmetrical uh, they shouldn't be absolutely parallel to each other because if they do look parallel to each other it will be boring and uh, not very organic and there are you know uh, the beard is organic thing so we have to keep it more organic organic all the way as people say no nobody say that but yeah probably some people say that the, those who are eating organic food for example i'm sure they say organic all the way or something like this but yeah you see how when i did this kind of thing so in and then out and then in and out so adding subtracting uh, geometry with the with the draw sharp brush i'm getting uh, kind of interesting and nice results and now we have it this looks pretty good uh, with a beard now he looks almost like the concept maybe we will increase the nose at some point or do some other things we'll see but now let's put the helmet on so how to put the helmet on again go to object mode mesh uv sphere and this sphere will be our helmet of course i will have to delete half of it so i'll press tab to go to edit mode then alt z to see all the polygons and then i will grab the bottom half of the polygons but i have to press 3 to go to polygon select mode select the bottom half x faces and now we have this and this will be yeah alt z and then just put it like this maybe i will stretch it forward and upward and put it like this yes so let's analyze the helmet a little bit so it's coming its upper part here is just above the eyebrows even some of some part of the eyebrows is going inside the helmet so i'll go to sculpt mode and make sure i have a big grab brush and just move the helmet into position with the big grab brush uh, i make sure i have a big grab brush because if i have a small one uh, it will not do very good uh, the small grab brush big grab brush forever now this helmet should be kind of small so maybe the hair i will select it and move it down also because the hair we don't need we need the helmet that's why the hair could go to hell i mean i don't care about the hair in 3d we don't care too much about the things that are not visible we can completely like push the hair into the skull inside the skull and when we remove the helmet the hair will be gone but it, we don't care about that at all because the idea is to achieve the look of the concept and the look of the con now he looks like a taliban but whatever uh the look of the concept like a taliban priest <sighs> uh, okay so the look of the concept is cool i i i see this thing here going on i'm not sure exactly what it is let me try to yeah it's the same here so the helmet is visible only in from front view and from the back view so we cannot exactly make out what is the helmet how is the helmet uh you know doing but yeah we have to just imagine it now i will push it closer to the head as close as possible and then if i have to even and probably i will have to make the head smaller because you see the helmet has to be smaller so the head uh let's put uh, some symmetry and the head should be also smaller and it will be i will make sure that it's smaller and that's sometimes uh, we have to adjust things especially when we have a couple of layers of things like clothes and stuff we need to adjust them otherwise it will not be as the concept so don't rely on your first sculpt of the head for example to set up everything else because you will make a mistake definitely there that's why we are putting everything together and then we are deciding what to happen uh, because other than otherwise it's gonna be a mess we don't want it to be a mess that's why we're doing so now the ears i'm not sure these things which are coming out from the helmet are they covering the ears they're kind of going over the ears or something 
uh, not exactly super sure about it, but we will make something like this. We'll see. Yeah, let me. So this is the pose, and they are coming from here. Those flaps, those flaps. I'm not sure if I have to make them separately, but uh, thinking logically, uh, because they are like going like this, probably they are on some kind of hinges and going like this. So I probably will make them separately, but how to make them? Let me show you how to make them. So go to tab on the helmet itself and just select. Uh, let's select from this side, by the way, it will be nicer. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and that's it. Then shift D to just get it out. This will be our flap. And uh, since this uh, our flap, we don't need it to be in the same mesh. We can press P to separate it. Because if you press right click, you will see that separate is P. You see the shortcut is P. So P selection and it's another mesh. So now we just have to Alt Q on this mesh to select it and then press A to select everything and start working on it. Put it into position, whatever it should be. Like, yeah, I will rotate it and put it here. Then we have to probably adjust the ears also, but we'll see. Yeah, the helmet should be a little bit away from the head. So uh, I will go to the helmet with the sculpting brushes to move it away from the head and a little bit more up from the ears. Okay. All right. And the eyebrows should go even down because if we move the head back a little bit, as it should be, in the, as it is in the concept, uh, it's not too, too much back, but it's a little bit tilted back. It's not only from the front like this, viewed from the front, although it could be, it's not a big issue. But uh, we are seeing some things about the helmet and other things. I will push, by the way, the, the this part of the helmet in because I feel the helmet has something uh, like... Um, I'm not sure exactly how it's called, but something to stop the rain from coming down on, he, on, on him like this. Something like a widening, like a border. And yes, this this is good. That's why we have to uh, acknowledge and we have to look at the concept more to see those kind of things. Now with this kind of border, it looks more like a German helm from uh, Second World War, but it's fine. I mean, it doesn't matter that much. It maybe not, uh, will not be a default Viking helm that much. But yeah, I like to, by the way, even if I have very low amount of polygons like I do now, I have to adjust everything using the uh, grab brush or the sculpting brushes. Sometimes I smooth, sometimes I just move it because I like to move it, move it. I will just push those things in to get this uh, kind of a feeling of the cheekbone and everything protruding. Not everything, just the cheekbone, basically. So this, I will push and put it on the edge of our helmet. And then what I will do is, uh, I will go to tab, which I am now in edit mode, and I will select this edge with control, and then I will extrude it and extrude it again and maybe one more time for the end. So this will be uh, one of our flaps. The other one will be with mirror for now. And then we will do something which is called solidify. Solidify modifier. You know, modifiers, as you probably know, because you are an intermediate user after all, you know that the modifiers can be stacked. You can put a lot of modifiers one uh, over the other. I hear people that I, I have heard of people that have put like uh, 30 modifiers one after another, which I don't think it's necessary, but for some reasons, uh, probably. So solidify, we go to the thickness and just make it thick. I mean thick, really thick. I mean thicker than the, than the concept because, why? Most of the things that are thick in the concept will make it thicker in uh, the model because for in order to be 3D printable, 
it needs more more parts to be very thick than you know than usual so we have to be aware of the 3d printing capabilities now i will put this thing on the top this thing on the top by the way it seems like some kind of a conus but in my opinion it's not a conus it's more likely something like a square but let me show you how i will do it so first i will go to object mode as i am now shift a and then i will go cone and this cone immediately when i stop doing it i mean i just applied the cone uh yeah and i lost it because i clicked on my on the on the canvas so you have to shift a mesh apply the cone and then immediately after uh, behind me you see this and the vertices let's try to dial them down to four okay there will be four and four i think it's good for our purposes here and this will be enough now i'll go to tab and just move it up scale it down with s and move it down and if we want to scale only the bottom of it we can just alt z press one select all the bottom edges or in this case vertices and then scale them down with s you know and i'm pressing alt z because otherwise if i try to select i will be selecting only the front ones but the back one will not be selected if you want to select everything you have to press alt z and then you can go back uh, to your normal view by alt z again alt z is a very good combination i use it all the time now i think this is relatively fine looking for now we have our overall look but we need more what do i mean by that uh you know here we have this cheekbone very protruding here it's not protruding that much probably i should hide it down a little bit because with these cheekbones especially from three quarters view he looks a bit more like uh uh, like an Asian type, like a Chinggis Han or something like this, and he should be a Viking. I don't think this is a, a Chinggis Han or something type of, or Genghis Han, or I'm not sure how it's called in English, but in Bulgarian, my language is Chinggis Han. I think in English is Genghis Han. I don't wanna be Genghis Han. Don't you get it on with nobody else but me. Nobody else but me. There's a very nice song, by the way, which is called Genghis Han. From... Eh, I forgot the name of the band. But it's kind of modern. I mean, it's uh, from the last five years, I think. And it's pretty cool. I can get a bit... I can get a little bit Genghis Han. Don't you get it on with nobody else but me. Nobody else but me. Yeah, I get a little bit Genghis Khan. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, taking the liberty to sing in here. Because you see, those courses have to be also fun. Although, I may not sing like a real singer. Uh, but I know that I'm not super bad. I mean, it's, it's okay. And also... You're not paying too much money about this uh, of this course, so I can sing a little bit. <laughs> yeah, some of you also are downloading it from the torrents, I know, so yeah. You have to forgive me for that, for the singing. Back in the days, I always see this. Back in the days when I was working for other people, I'm, I was making courses for Victory 3D, I was making courses for Nextut, and they were telling me, no, no singing at all. Don't sing in your videos. It's, it's forbidden to sing. Nothing is forbidden uh, until it's... Uh, I mean, it's some things are forbidden. They are fun, but they are forbidden. But this uh, hurt nobody, I think. Should be hurting nobody. Hopefully. <laughs> if I if my singing is hurting someone, it's... Uh, I don't know. So, solidify this. And just the helmet. And the helmet, by the way, I will solidify it very, very thick. I want the helmet and the head it, the, itself... To be merged together when i export it for printing for example i don't want uh some you know uh universe that the helmet will fall off after printing or something we don't want that uh, at least it, unless you want the helmet to be 
put on top of the character. He will have hair and everything, and then the helmet will be separate, and you will put it on top. But this will be difficult because hel the helmet should be pretty thick, although ours is pretty thick, but it should be thick, but also the inner portion of the helmet should fit the head pretty well. So there are a few things that are wrong with this. It's, uh, it's difficult. Let's put the horns, by the way, and see how it will look with the horns. So the horns are pretty good, pretty big. If we measure the distance between the beginning of the horn and the top of the horn, this distance will be bigger than the, than the head uh, by kind of a big margin. So let's try to do this thing. How to do it? I will tell you. We go to object mode and we go to the next video because I think this video is big enough now, 30 minutes, and we should go to the next one. But always save. So I save. I save it as a, the next video and I'm ready for the next video. So see you then.